Hello there guys! Today is Saturday, July 1st, so it's the first day of k Trapathon, which is why I'm vlogging here. And I, I'm just so excited for k Trapathon, and I do have some other things that will be happening this month. For example, I will be reading Bleak House. I think I need to get through like 400 pages this month, so that's definitely going to be happening this month. Um, lots of Bleak House reading. Um, however, I'm also going to be reading lots of Korean things. So last night I started Band Book Club, um, which I mentioned in my last vlog. This is a graphic novel following uh, Hyun, Hyun Suk, who what, it, when she was a student, Korea was going through the transition from dictatorship to democracy, and so this is kind of a graphic memoir of sorts. She says in the back that um, the ingredients for this book were true stories from a network of friends over the course of four years. For the privacy and safety of our subjects, we sliced, diced, and blended them into one narrative, starring a handful of amalgamated characters at a fictional university. So, um, some of the elements are fictional. It's like, it's almost like a I don't know what, what exactly that's called. I don't think it's a nonfiction novel exactly. I don't know. It's something. It's something, a blend of fact and fiction that's basically to protect privacy. But I think she's very much staying, she's communicating truths with her story. It's like very journalistic kind of. A lot of German journalism is like that. So yeah, I'm excited about this. Uh, there was already a really, really beautiful section last night when I was reading about mask dancing, which is something I just learned about in Korea through Bangtan Academy. I just, this spread is just incredible with all the masks. So I, I looked up some mask dance and I'm going to be watching that. I'm, I'm excited um, about watching that. Speaking of things I'm excited about watching, <laughs> Jill, um, Victoria just posted her July TBR and she mentioned that she's going to be hopefully doing some k Trapathon reading. So I'm excited to hear more about what she's going to be reading. Um, I haven't listened to that portion of it yet, so I'm still reading that. And also last night I listened to, I started a book called I Guess I Live Here Now by Claire Ahn, which is about an American New Yorker girl um, who is half Korean, I believe. And so <laughs> she, her mom ends up moving them to Seoul to be with her father, which I didn't realize that this was a thing, but she was describing how in Asian cultures it's really common for families to be split apart so that the child can get an, an education in an English-speaking country while the parent, one of the parents stays behind and works in Korea. So that's what's happening with this girl. Um, and I just, I really love her perspective and I think the writing is really good. Uh, I'm excited about this one. I'm probably more excited about this one than like the group pick at this point. Um, I meant to bring the group pick back here. I tried to start that one last night, but to be frank, I I'm not impressed by the writing off the bat. Off the bat. So hopefully the story really uh, is super swoony and wonderful, but I'm not impressed by the writing of Cat Show so far. So hopefully it improves and hopefully we end up loving it. Um, some other things. Um, I have, I just have so many Korean things on here to try, so I won't talk about them all because, yeah, that, that's a lot. But I found an interesting one, um, called Idol Gossip, which is actually written by, uh, she's like a journalist who did a story about K-pop for NPR and then wrote this book kind of based on what she learned. So I'm so interested about that, and also Idol Gossip, that's a play on words, so that would count. Um, and another one that I started already as well is Camp Zero by Michelle Min Sterling. And this is a thriller and it's set in a near future or dystopian kind of setting actually in Canada where everybody is trying to move from the US to Canada and I don't really know why yet. <laughs> I haven't gotten to that part. But um, something about an economic collapse and maybe some kind of control by the presidents. Anyways, regardless, people are trying to leave America for Canada and ca Canadians are not having it. So I'm very interested to find out more. Um, this Camp Zero is supposed to be, I think it's run by Americans and they are trying to like set up a new kind of society. I don't know. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm interested so far, but lately I've been so burned by things that I started and was really liking and then didn't end up liking that I'm just gonna chill on that for a bit. And 
Um, yeah, so that, that's mainly it so far for Kate Jorpathon, and I will keep you guys updated. Bye!
some of them though I think I will remember because like one is in Constantinople and that's really fascinating to me so anyways um, making progress on that I'm like probably 50 40 something pages in um, and I am in chapter 3 of Bleak House which is going to be my big focus um, now that I'm done with Pilgrim's did I tell you I finished Pilgrim's Progress? <laughs> yeah yeah I did at the end of the last vlog so good so good especially the portions at the river those were always the most poignant in the best parts I think the parts in the river so I started writing some discussion questions yay and anyways Bleak House I'm really enjoying it but it's gonna be slow for me I, it's gonna be hard for me to keep up with the pace of 200 pages or 14 chapters ish in my version every two weeks <laughs> So I'm going to really have to focus on finishing it, but I'm very determined to keep up with it. Um, in memory of Janelle, I really want to do this. And also, I just love reading with Victoria and Naomi. They're just ideal reading partners. And having all of the live streams is like, that's such a motivation for me. Honestly, that will that is one way to make sure I will keep reading something. Not entirely, because I did DNF Demons last winter, but that was kind of a special case. Um, regardless. Anyways, loving this. Gonna continue with it. Gonna continue with some of my audiobooking saved. History of Korea. Cloud Cuckoo Land. And we're gonna go get some tacos for lunch because one of my meal plans um, kind of fell through. The meat went bad. So we're gonna get some tacos. This is one of our favorite places to get tacos. They're really cheap. They're really filling. They're just really delicious. We don't really order other things there, but their tacos are amazing and very like Mexican. We have a lot of different kinds of Mexican food here. Sorry, it's so bumpy. Um, we have Mexican food that's more like American, which is the one that we went to for our anniversary, our 12 year anniversary with my parents in the last vlog. Um, or no, it wasn't the last vlog, it was the vlog for that. They have very like American food because it's super cheesy. There's tons of cheese on it. Here it's very Mexican. So Kevin asks for cheese and they make fun of him. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. I used to eat these as a kid. My neighbors always had them. They're so yummy. Or at least I thought they were when I was a kid. But they have so many fun treats in here. I got some beef tacos. Kevin got his tacos with cheese. <laughs> he got steak as well. I always steal his veggies. Branch, and today we're going to be talking about a book haul of fiction, nonfiction, and memoirs. Look at the baby. So fuzzy and cute. I wish he would turn back this direction again. But do you see all the fuzz on his back? He's so tiny. I need to give you some scale here. Like, <laughs> he's the size of like a tall chihuahua. <laughs> and there's another one. And there's mom. They just love this tree. The mimosa tree. Hello there guys, it is now Monday, July 3rd, so third day of k trip -thon. yay! Um, ironically, I haven't read that much yet for k trip -thon, even though it's the third day! What is wrong with me? Actually, nothing's wrong, I'm just really enjoying trying to complete things or get a move on bigger projects that I have, so I definitely am planning to continue... I I'm planning to read Korean things, I just... Um, I just got Princess Bari from the library and I'm going to start that next week with Tiffany and I've been listening to Camp Zero which I'm kind of I don't know it's kind of I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna really like it it's definitely leaning hard into the Americans are evil kind of trope we'll have to see America is evil kind of a thing so we'll, we'll see I don't know I'm not really a huge fan of that trope I'm, I'm willing to enjoy it if it's an enjoyable read and it's an interesting book, but if it's just there to make a point, then I'm probably not going to enjoy it. 
yeah. Jenny said this recently in a video where um, it doesn't seem like modern authors so much are doing great in adult fiction at like actually creating memorable characters, realistic characters, people that you meet. You know, it's often more more about sending a message and I think that that's true. That's, I think a lot of people get tired of that in modern fiction, that it's so message heavy. And maybe all fiction of every period was like that and we just save the best stuff and that's why classics are all great. I don't know, maybe that's why. Um, but anyways, gonna keep working on that one. I have been really enjoying Saved by Benjamin Hall. I'm now 77% through, so that I took a long break from that, um, but this week I've been really enjoying it. So I'm really trying to finish that one up so that I can get back to um, I Guess I Live Here Now because I'm loving I Guess I Live Here Now, but I'm only 8% into it because I haven't touched it because I'm trying to finish um, Saved. So, okay. Um, but I've been really still enjoying Cloud Cuckoo Land. I'm now, I'm probably not that much farther. I'm on page 59 now. Um, but there were some really fun things that I, so <laughs> she, somebody is described as sitting in the sun like a potted plant. And I was like, I can so relate to that. When I sit in the sun, I do just soak up like photosynthesis, baby. I need that. I love that sitting in the sun like a potted plant. That is totally what I do. Um, and I just also, um, I, there was this description of when, I think it's when she sees a, a painting. Yeah, it's when she sees a painting and she just says, she describes it this way. Each time something stirs inside her, some inarticulable sense of the pull of distant places, of the immensity of the world and her own smallness inside it. I just love that. That's what I, too, I feel like that about books as well. And that's why I think I really like reading about places other than like, America <laughs> a lot of times because I'm just so curious about what else is out there I love my life in America and I love America but you know it's just what else is out there there's so much and I really do want to get into exploring art more because I just was really blown away by a painting of Cain that I found last year and it's like Cain's family um, I forget who it was even by but it was in the book Washed and Waiting by Wesley Hill um, which is a fantastic book, by the way. I highly recommend it. I haven't finished it yet, but I got like 60 something percent through it. It's really, really good. It's by a Christian homosexual man who's really, a, really um, studied the literature on it and has come to a conclusion that is just kind of inescapable. And I just, I just, I just love it. It's so good. It's, it's, I highly would recommend it for people who want like a biblical approach to the issue of how to deal with homosexuality. Um, and he does go against some of the things that like I grew up believing. So I just love that. So anyways, um, and also, okay, we have characters who are in Constantinople. We have characters in like some other Eastern country that they didn't even say. 200 miles northwest of Constantinople in a small woodcutter's village beside a quick violent river <laughs> like i don't even know where is that <laughs> who knows but i just i love that it's kind of delving into this these kind of ancient settings it's so i'm not sure what this is um guilty feet did i just say this yesterday i think i did i think i told you guys this i'm just loving it though it's so i'm really confused about whether it's sci-fi or historical fiction or what regardless enjoying it and really also enjoying bleak house i'm actually making progress on this and I, I'm on chapter four now. So not, not that much reading progress has been made, but I have been reading every day, which feels really good because I wasn't always reading when I was leading up to this month because I was so busy preparing things and I, I really need to go prepare more things as well. <sighs> haven't gotten on my blog, haven't, haven't gotten Mad Libs ready yet. Mad Libs are this Thursday. I haven't put out anything about it. <sighs> Um, yeah. Haven't put out any other k Line content. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's okay. We're- I'm just doing the best I can. It's fine. If it's more of a second half of the month kind of readathon for me, that's- it is what it is. Okay, but I did also read the memoirs of Lady Kyung last night. She is such an interesting person. I wish I could remember how much I talked about this. I don't- 
think I have too much yet, but regardless, she's the wife of Prince Sado or Sado. I don't know. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I think it's probably Sado now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so prince Sado is the prince in Korean history who was executed by basically starving in a rice chest. His father, was it his father? I think um, he was causing, I don't know what the prince was doing if he was like criminal, if he was, I, I think he'd, there, I read the book The Red Palace and in that he had actually killed people. Um, but he was also mentally ill, so there was kind of a question, like, how much of the blame is laid with him? Regardless, his father apparently executed him by telling him to climb into this rice chest and then closing the rice chest, and it took him, like, six or eight days to die. That sucks. That's really terrible. Uh, that's, that's the, that is the history of it. Um, and the whole reason his father did that was because if he had publicly executed him, as his crimes would have required, he would have also had to execute his son's family, and he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to delegitimize his son's son, so his grandson, and he didn't want to delegitimize his daughter-in-law. So basically by killing his son this way, supposedly it didn't delegitimize his family, even though in the eyes of some people it totally did, and his son did suffer. Uh, uh, like accusations of delegitimization so it was just a huge huge deal in korean history and it's i've heard of it in several media in several media like there's a k-drama about it that joanne was telling me about called the red something else <laughs> then there's the red palace and then there's um you know dechita shuga um uh Yoongi's from bts the rapper he, he was a rapper before he joined bts so um, he is definitely August D is his his rapper name. Um, he puts out he put out this. I think I think actually Dechita is uh, an August D production, not a BTS production technically. So <clears throat> anyway, it's a fa fabulous fabulous um, music video about a mad king who's like ordering people's deaths and and stuff like that. And, and it's just such drama. It's such and it's a great song. Um, but that, he mentions a rice chest in there. Um, and so, yeah, I, it's, it's, this is fascinating, reading the memoirs of Lady Haegyong, and it's easy to read too, which I'm surprised by, maybe it's just the translation, but Jenny said this too recently, sometimes reading translated works is easier than reading classics of, like, English literature, because the hard stuff is kind of ironed out by the translators into like a more modern comprehensible type language so it's very easy to read um there are lists of all the names of people that are important at the beginning but honestly i just skipped those because um anytime the princess is mentioning someone she says my dad or my brother or my mother or whatever and then in like an asterisk the editor will put the actual historical name of the person down below and also if the princess was using difficult names, the translator just went ahead and changed it to something that is more, um, like, for example, with Prince Sado, um, she would call him by the name of his shrine or his burial site or something, or the city where he was buried. She, she called him by that name, and the translator was like, no, we're just going to call him Prince Sado. You know, <laughs> we're not going to call him this, we're not going to call him this difficult Korean name throughout the whole text, even though that's what she called him. So she's made some like executive decisions here just to make it a little bit more readable because everybody knows who Prince Sado is if you're reading this book. Um, so I haven't read the whole introduction, although Tiffany already has. Tiffany and Joanna and I are reading it and we have it on Boxer. By the way, I need to ask Penny. <laughs> Do you want to join our Voxer? I'll ask you. I'll ask you. Um, we've just started, so there's plenty of time. And um, by the way, this uh, the memoirs of Lady Hyegyong are available from the University of Pennsylvania. They made a PDF of it for free. So unfortunately, it's not like sendable to Kindle. It's too big to send by email, which is how you email. You have to email files to your Kindle. Um, or maybe some people can move them, but for some reason, it doesn't really work with my computer. Hi, so I'm making jajangmyeon, but I'm gonna make jajangbap actually with rice instead of noodles, just to take it easy on my tummy today. But um, I'm gonna be using mangchi's jajangmyeon recipe. So this is a Chinese Korean dish that 
um, was actually created by Chinese immigrants who were trying to make um, in things specifically for Koreans that Koreans would like. So I love that origin story. Um, I have gone to Chinese restaurants before and asked for it, but they didn't have it there. So um, maybe I'm just not in the right place for that. We don't have a lot of great Chinese food here, surprisingly, considering how, I mean, we're not that far from San Francisco. But, um, we just don't have great Chinese food here, unfortunately. Um, but regardless, gonna be making it. So it has potato, um, which I have in this bowl. I'm just soaking up the starch and I'm putting zucchini in it according to Monkey's recipe. And you're just kind of dicing things up to be about the same size. And I'm also doing Korean radish uh, called daikon. And you're supposed to use pork, but I, and you're supposed to cook the pork in with the stuff, but I'm not doing that because somehow my pork already smells very off and I'm afraid to cook it with the veggies because I don't want it to go bad. So I'm cooking the pork separately. It still smells bad. <laughs> I'm gonna try it once it's cooked, but I kind of just think I'm gonna end up eating like boiled eggs or something with my jajangmyeon, which is fine. I love a boiled egg. So, um, and if if the pork has actually gone bad, then we'll go tomorrow and get some more pork. I'm so disappointed though. It hasn't been in there for very long. I get, we bought it Friday. We normally shop Saturday, but we got it this Friday and it's Monday today. But I guess, I mean, my chicken's doing fine. <laughs> we bought chicken the same day and I'm still eating the chicken just fine. So whatever, that's really frustrating, but I'm gonna continue chopping and we'll see if my pork is okay. And I will show you the finished product of jajangbap. Bap means rice, by the way, or food in Korean. So jajangbap is, uh, so jajang is the black beans. I'll get you, I'll show you what the black beans are like. So, this is the jajang paste, black bean paste, and I will be making it with brown rice because that's what I have in the fridge. All right, so I'm putting in the radish first because the daikon will take longer to cook because it's a very hard vegetable. I've never actually fried radish before, so I'm very curious what this is going to taste like, but we're going to try it out. Um, maybe that's what you're supposed to do with like the big radishes, but like the small radishes I just normally eat raw like the little round red ones But maybe these giant ones that's what you're supposed to do with them. You're supposed to like cook them Before you eat them. I don't know. Or maybe that's just something you can do with them And maybe you can do that with the little ones too, and I just wasn't aware of it. Also possible So that will get going until it's hot and then I will add the other veggies. The pork actually tastes okay now that it's cooked. I'm still not gonna cook it with all the veggies though because I'm afraid that it'll like go bad tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm gonna cook the rest of the pork up right now so that um, I can make sure that it's at least cooked so that there's a chance maybe it won't go bad if I cook it all. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, so now I'm cutting open the jajang black bean powder, and I need to put a quarter cup of it into this pan with the veggies, which have been cooking for a couple minutes. And then you just have to fry the black bean powder for a bit. And hang on. Fry it in the center of the pan, at least that's how Monty did it. The other people that I watched, Aaron and Claire, they fried it separately and they just like fried the whole bag at once. But I'm just gonna do it this way because I don't wanna have to wash one of my pans in order to do this. So here we go! Yum! So I'll show you this in a second so you can kind of see what's going on. It's supposed to be like super salty and kind of umami-ish. Okay, wow, it's super sticky. <laughs> Here we go. 
So it's just going to fry here in the center. And once that's fried for a couple minutes, then I will put some water in there and cover the whole thing. So I added two cups of water to the veggies and the black bean sauce. So it's been cooking for 10 minutes and I'm still cooking more meat. I'm trying to save the meat. It's a rescue mission. So, and in here I have a quarter cup of water and a teaspoon of sugar. And I'm going to add, and by the way, now I'm listening to save. So where am I now? I'm at 80% now, so I'm making progress. He's in rehab, like really intense rehab, um, as you can imagine. Um, okay, so two tablespoons of potato starch. It's the Rob Red Mills, Rob's Red Mills. So this is to thicken it up, and then I have to check again what I need to add. <laughs> so I will show you when I add this, and then what else I need to do. <laughs> I need to watch the video again though. All right, so you just add this slowly and then you add a teaspoon of sesame powder. And then it's done. So I will add it. You, I know you can't see past this pot. I did not add that slowly. But hopefully it turns out okay. I will show you the finished product. I'll show you, oh, it's already starting to thicken. Look at that. Okay, I'll hold you over so you can see it. Whoa, look how much thicker it is already. That was fast. So it'll keep thickening up and I will add my sesame oil. This guy. And um, show you the result over rice. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, does that look so good? Um, I think, I, I already know, I haven't even made the Erin and Claire version. But I can already tell you that I prefer this one because I do not have nonstick pans because I always ruin them, always. I I don't know if it's because I have an electric stove or what, but I just always completely ruin nonstick pans. So I have stainless steel pans and it the black bean sauce was sticking to it as it was cooking in the center. But as soon as I added the water and cooked it for 10 minutes, it deglazed it and now you could see it's not sticking to the bottom anymore. When I stir it, it's not sticking to the bottom. So um, I think that that's gonna be key for me is cooking it all in the same pan so that when I add the water, it can deglaze the pan versus the way Erin and Claire do it, which is cooking it separately in a, um, with just oil in a nonstick pan. So it works better for me. Mangji's recipe works better for me, I can already tell you. Hi, so I finished it. I'll show it to you, but I think it might be a little bit bland for a couple different reasons. So one reason is I very geniusly forgot to add the onions. Um, hopefully green onions will help, but also because it wasn't cooked with the pork, it just, I tasted the sauce earlier and it tasted a little bit bland. So we'll see how it tastes after it's all mixed together with pork and green onions. And hopefully that will improve it. Also. I was re-watching the Erin and Claire version and they also added like ginger and soy sauce and I think they even added some hot sauce but I forget. So they added a lot more stuff to it. So I'm gonna try the Mangchi version and let you guys know what I think and then maybe at the end of the month I will try the Erin and Claire version. Although I know it's going to burn in my pan. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna avoid that yet. Maybe I'll ask my mother-in-law if I can use their nonstick pan. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. She usually helps me cook anyways, so maybe she wouldn't mind just bringing up her pan. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna try it. You're supposed to mix it up like a lot, which is really common with Korean food. It's like bibimbap, jajangmyeon. You have to mix it up really well so that the sauces cover everything because it's like all about the sauces. Okay. Mmm. Okay, that comes together really well. I really like it with the potato. 
Another thing about the Aaron and Claire version, they did not use the same amount of vegetables. I don't know, they have like, both Mangchi and Aaron and Claire have so many versions of Jajangmyeon that it's like, and I'll also see how this tastes with the noodles too in a couple days, so yeah. I, this is yummy actually. Yeah, I feel like it's a little bit bland, but if you cooked it right, it probably wouldn't be as bland. But I really like the flavor of the vegetables coming through. Like I've never had potato cooked in a sauce before. Usually in America, we just fry potatoes or bake potatoes. We eat them with sour cream. Like I actually don't like sour cream, but you get what I'm saying. Potatoes are more plain, I guess, but in this, they're like part of the whole flavor experience. It's pretty yummy. Look at the baby. He's so fuzzy and cute. I wish he would turn back this direction again, but do you see all that fuzz on his back? He's so tiny. I need to give you some scale here. Like, <laughs> he's the size of like a tall chihuahua. <laughs> and there's a and there's mom. They just love this tree, the mimosa tree. Hi, it is now Tuesday, July 4th. Almost done with saved. I've been listening to it while I've cleaned up the kitchen. Um, a lot of times when I cook something, the next day is when I have to clean it, so I'm just I'm out of energy. <laughs> but. Today I'm cooking up some Tokyo style ramen noodles. Just gonna boil them and I'm gonna try those in my jajangmyeon um, sauce, my blackened sauce. Um, oh my gosh, there's three of them in here. There's three packages of ramen noodles and I feel like one of them is plenty. <laughs> but anyways, okay, it comes with a sauce packet too. Maybe I'll add the sauce packet to the sauce just for a little extra flavoring. Anyways, um, I also just cooked up some onions and I'm gonna stir those into the black bean sauce. Hopefully add a little more flavor to it yeah. and I'll let you know how it tastes. Here we go. So you have to stir it really well first. As I explained with jajang bap last night, I also heated up some pork. But I'm keeping it separate just in case I run into bad bits. <laughs> Last night when I, while I was eating, I ran into some bad bits and I ended up throwing out the rest that was in my bowl. Okay, so it's all stirred up. <laughs> I had to add more black bean sauce because I didn't add enough at first. You want the noodles to be like super saucy. Finished, saved. Finally, my weekly vlog is exporting and I posted a work vlog and did a training for work, so I'm finally getting some stuff done. <laughs> There's a congress of birds on my tomato ring right there. Oh, I miss them. Only one stayed. I was trying to be sneaky, but apparently they saw me. Hey guys, it's now Wednesday, July 5th, and it's the evening. I've been working all day and uploading stuff for my streams coming up this weekend. So this weekend we have the Pilgrim's Progress stream, as well as a Zoom, and we also have Mad Libs, K-pop Mad Libs on my channel, so it's gonna be a great week. Um, I'll take you along for that. I just had a meeting with a friend today and um, a local friend, like an IRL friend, but she's uh, a mom of like lots of little babies. So we just zoom because from her house, that's, that's easiest. She's a homebody and I'm a homebody. So yeah, it was really refreshing and wonderful. And she actually had ideas for our next vacation that we're thinking, we're thinking our next vacation will either be to LA in the fall, to be going to a, uh, one of Kevin's USC football games and then also to visit Victoria and then another trip would be visiting uh, Las Vegas and then also visiting Victoria <laughs> and meeting Sandro so um, and, and Julio of course so yeah um, I'm excited for both of those trips because both of those trips will mean Victoria so we're looking at both of those in the fall if my physical therapy continues the way it's going 
so exciting. We're even looking at going back to church really soon, so progress is being made. It's exciting. So anyways, that was a really, it was a really good day, really busy day. Um, I need to actually get going and clean all the dishes, but I wanted to just update you briefly. I'm not that much farther in Bleak House because I had a lot of anxiety yesterday and I just couldn't read. Um, so inst instead, I, I think I'm on chapter five. I, I apparently I lost my place, but regardless, I'm like 60, 70 something pages in, something like that. Um, so I've been listening to, oh, and there's this character named Pee Pee in Bleak House. A little kid named Pee Pee. P E E P Y. <laughs> um, so it's, he's so cute. He's just, he's just a little baby who's being sort of neglected by his mom and one of the characters in um, Bleak House is just, she just cares for him. Whenever she sees him, she mops up his little dirty little body and <laughs> lets him sleep in her bed. And um, yeah, I'm living for Pee Pee right now. So adorable. Bleak House, um, Kate had posted a story on Instagram saying it was cozy and that was so unexpected but so true so I, I definitely feel like it's cozy um, so far so I'm hoping to get back into it tonight we'll see um, after do after cleaning the whole kitchen and all that and doing my exercises I might not have good focus again we'll see we'll see what happens but most of my anxiety is taken care of because I've accomplished a lot of stuff today that I needed to accomplish so yay so I've been listening to I guess I live here now that's what I was listening to last night when I couldn't read. I was just, um, I started kind of mapping out what I want to do for my ATs journal. I think I'm going to do several journal pages of ATs. I don't know where I put my sketchbook. I have a sketchbook somewhere, but I literally can't find it. I lost it. So um, I'm just going to put it in one of my Korean notebooks and I'll put like the words on the side. So yeah, I'm super excited to do my ATs um, journaling. So I'll show you that. Um, but anyways, uh, I guess I live here now is enjoyable, especially for a Korea boo like me, <laughs> but it's The main character is really really whiny and really not nice She's just not a nice person at all And so all of her interactions for me are super cringy and I don't Enjoy that aspect about it. I was really enjoying it a lot like yesterday if you'd asked me how I was feeling about it I would say I'm 1000% enjoying the story despite the main character but she's just kind of getting worse. And we're 30% in, maybe, maybe she'll get better. I don't know, but it's, it's annoying. So hopefully she improves and stops being such a, she, she's just kind of a brat, she's a total brat, so. Um, yeah, and regardless though, I'm gonna continue with that one. I did DNF, however, I mean, it may not be a permanent DNF, but I think I've DNF'd Camp Zero by Michelle Minsterling, also at 24%. There, maybe there's something with me between 20 and 30 percent where I just like DNFing things there. I don't know. Regardless, it's not a classic. It's not a nonfiction. It's not something that I feel like I need to push through. I'm just not enjoying it anymore. So I'm going to stop listening to that um, and continue on with how I live now. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about is I wanted to mention that I really love the narrator of Cloud Cuckoo Land because all of the historical fiction set in like Constantinople and stuff like that, like the Greek accents and just all the interesting accents, I feel like the narrator is doing a fantastic job with that. Um, and also we did watch our first, I forgot to mention this, we watched our first episode of Hospital Playlist on Saturday in Tiffany's Discord and it destroyed all of us. It was it was so sad, guys. I was not ex everybody has been telling me how much they love this drama. I was not expecting it to totally completely tear our hearts out on the first episode. So, I've watched the second episode in Korean and I'm working on the third in Korean, and I'm going to probably go back and try to watch them in English cuz I'm missing a lot. I think K-dramas are harder for me than like variety shows or things where the Korean is a little less formal. Um, I feel like it's it's hard for me to follow along in a situation with really formal Korean, which is what is usually in K-dramas because it's usually like among, it's like in a workplace or people who don't really know each other that well yet <laughs> and stuff like that. So uh, I'm trying to watch everything though, at least the first time I see it in Korean. So I'm going to continue trying with that. And uh, that's mainly it, but I also wanted to say um, Pangtan Academy is apparently uh, falling apart, it seems, <laughs> which I guess it's lasted three years, so it started sometime during COVID, 
and maybe that's why it was such a success at first but then it got like a huge influx of traffic um that's my free korean academy and now there's all these accusations happening um like of misconduct and stuff and it's all digital content conduct but yeah so yeah so we're gonna see what happens they said they're gonna first they said they're gonna reopen july 14th and they closed on the second and it's the fifth and there's already been another announcement saying never mind we'll open sort of again in august and then we'll have a soft opening again in september and now i'm just like are you guys gonna reopen or is this complete and they said it's gonna be like stripped down and there's gonna be a lot less work required to stay in which maybe that's a good thing i don't know it was kind of stressful the way they were doing it honestly uh, i was stressed anyways but i don't know it just depends on if they can retain enough teachers i think and enough volunteers to help run it because a lot of the people were actually teachers who were, who were teaching the classes and then they had a ton of volunteers who were just helping with like we'll provide you the answer key you just make sure people's answers match up with the answer key stuff like that stuff that i could do i was looking forward to helping with something like that um yeah after it settled in a little more but we'll see what happens i guess in september hopefully we'll see what happens but yeah the updates are coming thick and fast from different people tons of people are quitting on twitter people are tweeting about how they're quitting so yeah it's really sad but i want to say though the two months that i spent in bangtan academy were amazing i learned so much i learned a lot about how to learn i learned about all kinds of korean resources it was a great time so much stuff that i wouldn't have known about without them so I really did learn a lot the two months that I was there, but hopefully hopefully it will reopen again and still be available because I did pour a lot of time into it. But I guess if not, then I'll just continue learning it my own way and just keep doing my best and maybe I'll find something else that will really help me with my learning. I still need to work on socializing. <sighs> okay, that's it for now. Um, oh, and I am really enjoying the Jajang black bean stuff it's keeping well I, in fact i would say it gets even more flavorful over time which is cool it's kind of like spaghetti sauce the longer you have it the more flavorful it gets so i'm really enjoying it and i just started adding some um gochujang uh, which is like a sweet spicy cream pepper paste and soy sauce to my sauce and that actually improved it quite a bit so now it's really yummy anyways i'm gonna go clean the kitchen and do my stretches and I'll talk to you. Hi, it's now Thursday, and I just wanted to show you, I just whipped up a couple recipes in the last, well, how long did it take me? It took me maybe an hour. Um, so I boiled some eggs, soft boiled some eggs, and made what's called Mayak eggs. There's a mess in the background. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and so this is the recipe from Stella and Spice. Mayak means drug, so meaning they're addictive eggs. <laughs> So addictive. They have soy sauce and um, cilantro and green onions and furikake and some water and some maple syrup. I use maple syrup. She uses like plum extract or something. Um, but I just use maple syrup because you can use whatever sweetener you want. And um, you're supposed to put in some hot peppers. I just put in a little bit of smoked paprika because <laughs> my smoked paprika is from Europe and it's super spicy for some reason. Um, anyways, so I can't do much spicy, so. These are so addictive and Tiffany was just making them this week and that made me think, oh man, I really want those. I, I need, I, I like having boiled eggs on hand because I just usually feel good after eating boiled eggs. So it's one of those foods I can pretty much always tolerate. And then the other thing that I made was spicy Korean carrot salad. And I have the recipe here, so it's from uh, what is it? Let the baking begin. Spicy Korean carrots. Yeah, so I'll link, I put, I always, whenever I mention recipes, I put in the description down below how to find those recipes. So if there's ever a recipe that I'm making that you're like, oh, I want to try it, you can do that. But these are the ingredients, in addition, of course, to julienne carrots. I also wanted to show you guys that my, my new containers that I got I think it was in last week's vlog. They're still so successful. I didn't clean up at all. I'm just literally showing you how I'm living. So I've been reading Bleak House this morning, so that's out because I was hoping I would have some time this morning to read some more, but I ended up cooking instead. 
Um, and then all of my stuff is still in here. Like this is working great. It's keeping it so much cleaner. Hey guys, now it is Saturday, uh, Friday, July 7th. So this will be the last day of the vlog. It's a very exciting day. We have our K-pop Mad Libs tonight. And I've been stressing a little bit trying to figure out exactly how we're gonna do it. But I think I know how we're gonna do it and it's not too complicated. So I'm just gonna meet with my other fellow Mad Lib creators a little bit early tonight so that we can go over how to do it. Oh my gosh, I just really, I have to show you the tree. I'm sorry, I, I'm turning you around. This tree is something else today. Look at, look at the pink. It's just gorgeous. Wow, wow, okay. Anyways, okay, back to you, back to Kate Um, bleh. Oh dear. Where did I have you? There? Sure, yeah, that works. Okay, so, um, and something else exciting happened today. Our first K-Dropathon vlog came out. Um, from, this one's from you, and, and I just love this vlog, guys. She did so much fun stuff in it. Like, she made tteokbokki, she made tenjang jjigae, which I am now craving, and I think I'm gonna make, because for the first time, I have dried anchovies to make the stock with. I also got kelp, which I showed in an earlier video. I got some kelp in the mail, so I'm gonna make some anchovy kelp stock and make some tenjang jjigae. I don't know which week exactly that'll be happening, but sometime this month that is happening. And since I have so much leftover... By the way, I was wrong about the jajang meaning black bean sauce. That's actually not. I, that's what Papago calls it. But I think, I, I saw somewhere else that I think the black bean sauce is called chunjang. So I don't know exactly what jajang means. <laughs> I don't know. I, I need to figure it out. I need to look up the root word there. But anyways, um, I also did a bunch of recipe planning yesterday. And I'm going to make some food next week that's kind of Korean-y. So I got lost in K-food TikTok yesterday and I was just watching so many. There are so many fascinating TikTokers who do like Korean 안녕하세요. food. Hey. I, I'm finally hey. getting hey. recommendations that are like in Korean, which is really exciting. Um, sometimes they'll have English subtitles, sometimes not. But I feel like that's going to be a good way for me to get used to Korean as well. It's just watch Korean TikTok. Like people are talking in Korean, and if I want to understand what they're doing and saying, which I do, I'll have to understand it. So, anyways, I saved. Finally, TikTok has really picked up that I want Korean food. That's, that's what I'm interested in seeing right now. So I find recipes on TikTok anyway all the time. Something that I always do, but regardless. So anyways, what I ended up deciding to make for this coming week is I'm going to make a kimchi grilled cheese at least once or twice. That kind of destroys my stomach, so I'm not going to have it a lot. But I'm also going to ask the counter at our local grocery store if they have... Samgyeopsal, um, pork belly, because I we asked them once and they said that they have it sometimes, but they didn't have it that day. So I just have to keep going and asking. And if they don't have that, then I'll probably make some like pork ribs that I have in the freezer. But regardless, um, and then the rest of the week I'm going to be making things that are not Korean-y <laughs> because I need beef this week. <laughs> so, um, I need the iron. So, okay, um, what else was I gonna tell you? Oh yeah, I, I DNF'd, I guess I live here now. I should have known just by the tone of the title, but the main character who, she moves from New York to Seoul, but she's super unhappy about the move and the entire time she just whines about living in Seoul and like her dad is really rich and she's going to this nice school and she's eating this delicious food and she's meeting these cool friends and yet all she does all the time is just complain and I should have known just by the title I guess I live here now it's such a whiny title I understand the author's doing this on purpose and maybe the character improves I only got to 31% I'm gonna start calling the 31 to like 40% Death Valley for me because I DNF a lot of things in the 20 to 40% range. But I think that's because that's when you're starting to get a sense of what the book is really gonna be about. Like the introductory stuff, it can be really, I, I really liked the writing of I Guess I Live Here Now. Like the writing was 
skillful and fresh enough that it made me want to really give the book a great chance because I was enjoying the writing. But I just really don't like the main character. She's such a whiner. And so I miss I miss Comeback a lot. I really miss Comeback. That was so good. Maybe I'll just order Comeback again and reread Comeback. But regardless, I did continue forward a little bit with Once Upon a Cape Prom and I'm now like 15% through. And you know what guys, I'm enjoying it. It's not going to be a, a like five star book. Uh, I think it's probably going to be more of like a three star book. But I, since I'm just listening to it on audiobook, I think some of the annoying things about it are not going to be a big deal. There's some fun things already happening, happening on it. So I'm really glad that we ended up choosing this because I think this was like a safe choice. It's going to be enjoyable even if it's not like a five star, five million star book. Um, the writing, again, I'm not really impressed by the writing itself, and it's very, very tropey, which in general, I'm not really a trope fan. I like things that are fresh, which is why I was enjoying I Guess I Live Here Now, but in this case, we are celebrating tropes, so this just really fits. So I'm enjoying this. So um, we're following a girl, what's her name? I don't even know. I just listened to it. Elena, that's her name. Elena Sue. And she is kind of down on prom, mainly because I'm trying to like turn it so that it's not glaring, but it's just like, it's constantly glaring. Like I can't, I can't, I'm just going to put it down because it's bugging me. Um, anyways, we're following a high schooler named Elena Sue, who's kind of down on prom, mainly because the person that she wants to go to prom with, who promised to take her to prom, promptly moved away to Korea when they were 10 years old. And she has not heard from him in years, even though he promised to keep in touch. And he didn't keep in touch because he got really busy with his K-pop stardom, basically. So, yeah, she's, she's just kind of a Grinch about prom. And she is trying to instead have all of her peers donate the money that they would normally spend on prom, which for some people that's like $1,000. Can you imagine spending $1,000 on prom? Holy crap. I spent probably, I think I spent like 150 on my dress and maybe like, I, and I used that dress for a lot of things. I still have that dress. I love the dress. So that, that worked out really well for me. I didn't end up spending much, but a thousand dollars. That's crazy. Anyways, regardless, um, she's like, you could be spending these thousands of dollars on this community center where she volunteers and she, I really love the idea of this community center. Maybe they're out there. I've never even heard of this. Maybe because I live in a very small town, but um, this community center, which basically gives moms who are working moms a place to drop off their kids that's safe and will keep the kids busy. The kids can have fun and make friends and play games and do club activities and stuff. Um, it's for like moms who work odd hours too. It's it's like you know moms who don't necessarily just work the nine to five where daycares are open to take care of your kids. So. Um, yeah, I, I love the idea of this community center and I love that Elena is so passionate about it and she's like advocating for it and she's trying to get people to like, instead of paying a hundred, hundreds of dollars for this limo, instead you can just hang out with your friends and, you know, do whatever and donate that money to this community center. So I like her heart, um, and I, I'm enjoying this one a lot. So yay, I'm glad. I think even a three star is better than a DNF. So yay. And um, I also did solidify plans with Tiffany that we're going to start Princess Bari next week. So yeah, I need to get going on my stuff. But basically all I've been reading other than this audiobook of um, Once Upon a K-Prom is Bleak House <laughs> because just keeping up with one chapter a day in this is really keeping me busy reading. So I crossed the 100, no I didn't, I crossed 94, page 94. So I'm almost at 100 pages through. I did cross the 10% mark last night in my reading. So yay. So um, I'm going to try to fit in more reading now that I, some of the events are prepared for and I'm ready for them. Maybe I can have a little more time and focus and less anxiety and I can read this and then once I finish that move on to like Memoirs of Lady Hyegyung or Princess Bari. I also did start last night a totally unrelated book. Uh, what's it called? It's Kate Howe's Patreon book. The Belton Estate by Anthony Trollope. That one's like 400 pages so I just don't think I will get that far. But Kate said the audiobook is great so maybe I'll listen to it on audiobook. We'll see. Okay um 
What else? Um, oh, and I wanted to mention too, if you were watching Hospital Playlist but the first episode deterred you, I just want to encourage you, it's very common for the first episode of a K-drama to be way more intense than the rest of the drama will be. There are usually intense moments throughout the dramas, but a lot of them that are more, that are just considered, a lot of the genres of K-drama that I've seen, I, I wouldn't say a lot of them, certain genres of K-drama are intense. I mean, Squid Game, thrillers, if you're, if you're watching a thriller, you can expect that it's probably going to be intense throughout the whole thing. But if you're not watching like the thriller genre, if you're just watching like a more mainstream K-drama about emotions and like day-to-day -day living of people, a lot of times, even if the first episode is really intense, a lot of times that won't be carried through the entire drama. It won't all be that intense. So I just want to encourage people. I, the second episode was funny and much less intense. I have now watched it in Korean with subtitles. <laughs> Korean subtitles and then I watched the English subtitle version and um, it there was a lot of funny stuff in it so I'm excited to continue on with that I think I'm gonna be okay with it I was very nervous after the first episode but again I kind of know that the first episode of a k-drama is gonna be really intense so um, what else I also wanted to talk about I started um, I finished lesson five last night of my Korean um, talk to me in Korean level three book and the next episode is talking about a new way to make future tense Urkeo, which is something that I have seen in everybody using and I've I it seems like K is used in a lot of like abbreviated sentences and I was like I know that this is some grammar form it's like an abbreviation in grammar form and I need to learn it and I'm finally learning it I'm so excited I already know one um future tense which is urkoyo and so that's what i've been using for like the whole time i've been, <laughs> been learning korean but urkoyo is what i'm working on next so i'm just excited to be moving on with this because while i was in pangtan academy i was mostly reviewing um earlier stuff because you have to prove that you know the material before you can move on to this this stuff which is kind of a bummer because i already know the other stuff but it is what it is um but i was doing other things with them too like watch-alongs and reading webtoons and create and stuff like that so I definitely learned a lot in the time that I was there but regardless I'm excited to be moving forward again in level three so um, today we're gonna go we have a physical therapy appointment so we're gonna go get some yummy lunch we're gonna I wish <sighs> super burger the place that has really good milkshakes and delicious burgers and chili cheese fries and stuff um, we go there when I'm, I need to get back home quickly, basically. And I need to do that tonight because we have Mad Libs. So um, it's nice because both of us can eat there. And a lot of the other places that I like, he doesn't like. He will eat somewhere else. And then we have to sit through two lunches, basically. And uh, that just takes forever. So we're going to go to Super Burger again because it's quick and it's delicious. And I was wishing that they had their Samgyeopsa uh burger this week because they do sometimes they have like a pork belly burger a korean pork belly burger with like this spicy sweet sauce and tangy and it's so good but they don't have it right now so right now they have i think they call it a california type burger i forget i forget exactly what it was called but i'm excited i'm gonna get that burger um and i think i was actually not gonna get a dessert this week because I had two bowls of ice cream last week, but uh, and my stomach was like, how dare you? <laughs> um, however, they have a s'mores milkshake this month. It's their, every month they have like a special for their burgers and their shakes. And I'm gonna get both of the specials because next week I'm not gonna be having sweet things. I'm gonna be feeling terrible. So, and it has been over a week now since I had anything sweet. So yeah. I'm gonna get the s'more shake. So none of that's none of that is Korean, sadly, but it is delicious. And then I'll take you along for the med lips, and then we'll wrap up the vlog because this is already so long. We get the s'mores shake. It looks like grand cracker, grand cracker on top. Super excited. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the California Dreamin' Burger. 
It's got fries and avocado and a million other things that I don't even know, but it just sounded good today. And they have the best ranch and barbecue sauce that they make. Super excited. How do you even eat this? Oh my gosh. This is enormous. Ooh. Whoa. It has so much sauce. Mm. Yum. Hey guys, I totally forgot that I was gonna vlog our Mad Libs, <laughs> our key trip with our Mad Libs, but I was preparing so much and then having so much fun that I completely forgot to vlog, but everything that was live you can see on the channel. So if you came, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for making it a blast. It was such a blast. Now I'm going to probably go study some Korean. Maybe I can finally work on the future tense that I've been so excited about to start today. Thank you for watching this vlog. Let me know down below if you're taking part in Key Tropathon, if you're reading Bleak House, if you read Pilgrim's Progress. We have our events tomorrow. I'll start a new vlog tomorrow and um, hopefully get some more Key Tropathon prompts out of the way. <laughs> All right.